In addition to central tendency, we're also going to learn about dispersion. Dispersion is a class of descriptive statistics that deals with how much values in a data set differ from one another. As you can see in these four example data sets, we have the mean of each of these data sets being equal to five. But clearly, they're not all spread out in the same way. In the first case here, we actually have no dispersion whatsoever. All of the values are equal to the mean. All of the values are equal to five. However, over here in this case, even though the mean of this set of numbers is equal to five, we find that there's much more dispersion here. The range goes from minus 500 to 550. And in general, there's a big difference between each of these data values and the mean of, of five. So for going from the first to the last data set here, we see increasing levels of dispersion. Intuitively, I think you can see that that's true. But what we are going to do is go over a few statistics that allow us to quantify, to put a number to the amount of dispersion there is in a data set. The simplest way to define dispersion is with the range of the data set. And range is simply the difference between the highest and lowest values. So we take the highest value, x max, and we'll subtract from that the lowest value in the data set, x min. So going back to the previous slide, let's look at what the range is of each of these data sets. Here we have range equals 5 minus 5 equals 0. Here we have range equals 6 minus 4, 2. Here it's 7 minus 3. And here it's 550 minus minus 500, which equals 1,050. So now we saw intuitively that, that the dispersion increases from set 1 to set 4. But now we can see in terms of range that it quantifiably the dispersion is increasing as well. Now imagine the case uh, where we had a set 5, 5, 5, and maybe there are a hundred more fives in this set. And the very last value in the data set was 10,000. What impact is this single data value going to have on the range of our set? Imagine the set that only considers the fives. If that were the case, then the range would equal zero. But if we include just one extreme value in our data set, that's going to increase our range to 9,995. So we see that there's an extreme impact, or the, the impact of one extreme value over here is very, very strong with the range. And in order to counteract that effect, we're going to use instead, most often, the interquartile range. This is often abbreviated to the IQR, interquartile range. Uh, when we split a distribution up into quartiles, we are doing it in such a way that there's an even number of observation in observations in each of these ranges. And what we are going to do is find the number that splits, that, that corresponds with these two splits, between the bottom 25 and the next 25, and between the top 25 and the, and, the, and the next lower 25. So that's the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. And we're going to define the IQR as the 75th percentile mi minus the 25th percentile. Now let's go back to our previous case. Why does this why would the IQR help make our statistic less sensitive to extreme values? Well, based on this set over here, what is the P25 and the P75? So the 75th percentile is the, is the value associated with the cut between the top 25% and the middle 25%. So that cut is going to be somewhere in here, somewhere in this set of fives. And the cut for the bottom 25% is going to be somewhere over here, also in the set of fives. 
So in each case, we have P25 equal to 5 and P75 equal to 5. So here, the IQR is equal to 0. There's no difference in values between the uh, amongst the middle 50% of cases. So inside here, we have 50% of the cases. And we're saying that there is no variation in that set, that the range in that set is equal to 5 minus 5 equals 0. So in fact, we have a much better uh, measure of dispersion than, than just the range alone. Because this measure is not going to be sensitive to any outliers that might exist on either end of the spectrum. And once we know what the interquartile range is all about, now we know how to draw a box plot. A box plot is a very commonly used plot in order to illustrate a distribution of numbers, a data set. So what we have is the uh, data values on the vertical axis. And we are going to draw a, a plot with a box in the middle. And the ends of these boxes are going to be at the upper 25th percentile, or sorry, that's the 75th. The upper quartile is the same as P75. P and over here, we've got P25. We put a line through the median value and the distribution. And we're going to extend a straight line up until we find the 90th percentile and a straight line down to the 10th percentile. And we're going to have these outside values just represented as individual, dot, individual dots out here. So what this tells us on the first hand is how much dispersion there is within the interquartile range because the height of this box tells us how big the interquartile range is. It's also going to tell us how much dispersion there is from the quartiles to the 90th and 10th percent, uh, sorry, to the 90th and 10th percentages, percentiles. So that's another measure of range, or another region that we're interested in knowing how much dispersion there is. And then we are going to be able to see how dispersed the most extreme values in the data set are. If our, if our little x's are all really close to the 90th percentile, well, then we don't have too many extreme values up in the 10th percentile. But if they stretch way out, even off the scale of this plot, then we know that we do have some very extreme values in our data set. 